A warm welcome to all my dear friends. Today I am here to teach you or teach us or learn together the part 3 of chemical equation and reaction. So let's begin. So before beginning the chapter, I took the part 2 and the part 1. I guess you guys saw the part 1. But you didn't see the part 2 means just click over here and I will send a card. You just click over here it will take you there. So let's begin the chapter. Congratulations my friends to come to the part 3 of chemical equation and reaction. If you didn't see the part 2 of this chapter then you won't understand that clearly what I am teaching right now. So I request you guys to see part 2 then come to part 3. Because in the part 2 I explain how to find the valency using a periodic table. And you can learn first 18 to 18 elements and some extra elements like copper, then cobalt, nickel and etc. And silver, gold, platinum, mercury. These are like some of the important things. So first 18, 19 and 20, first 20 and the rest 4. So total 26 elements you need to learn. Like first 26, no, first 20 you learn. Then extra 6 elements I explained it already in the part 2 itself. So let's begin with the part 3. In this part 3 I want to make it as short as possible. Because in this if I take the most of, if I cover most of the topics, then it won't be, it will take a long and I cannot explain it well also. So I'll give the long part, like long topics for the next part. Okay, so this chapter extends a lot because there are many parts because I need to teach you very well to you then only you can understand very clearly this chapter and this is one of the important chapter too. So here we have some types of chem equations under this topic. So chemical equation, word equation, skeleton equation. So chemical equation we know I guess. So for x I am taking iron and chlorine. Okay, so Fe plus Cl2 gives us Fe Cl3 right so this is a chemical equation right so now we'll come to the second thing word equation what is the word equation if you ask so let's go a little back side okay let's go a little back from the past we'll go to the past so in the past like when we are in kindergarten or when the grade one we should learn like this one yeah right like one and they will ask us to write in a word also so word of this thing will be nothing but one so now what they are trying to ask us is i am is the elements f is the element they are asking us to write in words like i r o n like this they are asking us to work but in the kg or in the grade one we used to write like we need to do the numbers now we are in a higher grade so they are asking us to write two of the elements so let's begin so here we need to what we need to do i am taking the same example so it will be easy to understand right so fa is the so fa means is nothing but iron so i should write here iron plus chlorine which is 2 chlorine over here. So I need to write in the bracket like a 2 and gives us iron chloride. Iron chloride. Okay, so iron chloride. So if you notice properly, if there is an oxygen over here, in this place if there is an oxygen, it would be iron oxide, iron hydride, iron sulfate. Like that it comes. Sulfide, sorry, okay. If sulfur is there, means it will come sulfide, oxide, chloride. So we are adding the E at the last. So when we are pronouncing it, it will be like iron chloride. If you are pronouncing without the E, D, then it will be like iron chlorine, iron chlorine. So it won't be like it won't pronounce or if I am telling you iron chlorine, means you will like iron chlorine. If I am telling iron chloride only, you will understand that. I will write them both like FeCl3. So if I am telling iron chloride, how will you write it FeCl3? That's what I am going to teach in this session. So before teaching that, before knowing that, we need to know. They will ask us whether to write in a word equation or a chemical equation or a skeleton equation. So there is another thing which is hiding over here. Like chemical equation we know. Word equation means from term itself we derived it. But what is a skeleton equation? 
what we need to write for a skeleton equation so for this equation i cannot give any examples also because it's a new thing what you are going to learn so if you are going higher in the grade so we will learn more new things only so let's check what is the skeleton equation in this skeleton equation why i kept it at the last because this skeleton equation is equal to they both okay we have an option whether we need to write with this one or with this one okay so i am taking the this one itself so the chemical equation itself i'll take but we each thing will not have the same thing right so there should be something new if you guessed it with it's nothing but we need to modify this sentence this chemical equation we need to tell them whether it's in a solid form or in a liquid form or in a gas form or in a precipitate okay if you ask what is a precipitate i guess i taught you in the gray i mean the part one only so still now i'll just give you a small recap this precipitate is nothing but suppose there is a jar over here okay assume that there is a jar over here and i mix two things two chemical equations okay and i make them settle over here for a while so after 10 minutes or half an hour when i come over here and see then there will be a curd like substance formed at the bottom of the chemical okay so there will be like a curd like substance curd like substance means when you are mixing two different blood groups we will get it like a curd like substance right the same thing happens over here we will get a curd like substance it will be either in yellow color most probably it will be in yellow color okay so there will be curd like substance that's called a precipitate if you need to more learn if we need to learn a more lot about this thing precipitate so this is what my next part is going to be okay so before going to that we'll just learn we'll finish this chemical equation so i f e we'll just write f e i mean it state whether it's in which state it is it's in a liquid form or a solid or a gas so this is going to be a solid yes right i am solid is a solid so chlorine cl2 which is going to be a uh, liquid okay then fecl3 so f e so here what we are going to do is we need to write which it is which type of f it is so this is a type of 3 okay so 3 over here and cl which is totally a solid right now so when this fecl3 is the solid right now when i combine this fe which is a solid plus a cl2 in a liquid form i'm getting a fecl3 in a solid form this is how to write a skeleton equation this is how to write a word equation and a chemical equation i guess we know a lot of this so i don't need to give any examples right so but don't think i won't give any examples my next video i mean after the part 5 or for part 4 then i will be making an another thing where we practice a questions for this whole chapter so keep up with us so now we have completed we know what is a chemical equation word equation and a skeleton equation so let's do some chemical problems so here we are we will just find the chemical equation of this so as i told in the last thing when we are doing it when i get like a iron chloride then you asked me then i told you like how to find it how to see it how to get the iron chloride how will i write how will i know that if it is fecl3 or fecl2 how do i know that so that's where that's why i thought that i would take these thing and join these thing for this part okay so here i have some chemical equation i mean chemical uh, okay so here the first one is magnesium chloride aluminum oxide calcium oxide then sodium nitrate so here nitrogen only we are writing as nitrate so as i told at the last it ends with de but except nitrate it ends with te also okay some elements are ends with the de and te okay so remember that that means this element always come at the last over here so first one is magnesium chloride so what we are going to do is here there are two methods okay one is like the hard way like we need to calculate many things one is the easiest method as usual i'll tell you only the easy one right 
So the easy one over here is, if you didn't see my part 2, okay, it's a warning. If you didn't see my part 2, it will be, you will struggle a lot when to do these equations, okay. So in the part 2, as I told, I explained how to find the valencies. So here we have the magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride, what we need to do first is, Make a column or not in the column, let's just imagine there's a line over here and we'll write the chemical equation just right here, Kelly. Or no need to write it also. Okay, just for beginners, I'm telling, okay, just write here chemical equation, just write chem and write here valency or V A N. Okay, now write the chemical equation. I mean the chemical formula for this magnesium Mg, right? For magnesium, so write Mg. Close to it, write C N. Okay, chlorine. So write its valency now. So magnesium's valency is 2 and chlorine's valency is 1. So this is called taking, I mean cross multiplication method. As usual, we have two sides over here. What we should do? Cross multiply. So we need to multiply Mg and 1 and Cl and 2. So if they are a variable, what we have done? So for Mg, okay, I'm teaching some maths also then this thing. So here x is there and here y is there and here 2, I mean here 2 and here 1 is there, okay. So when I'm cross multiplying them, I used to write it, like we used to write it in maths as 1x and 2y, like this we used to write, right. But in chemistry, the method what we did is correct, but the way we wrote it is wrong. So the way we wrote is wrong. So in chemistry it is wrong. But in maths what we done is cut. Okay. So what we need to do is this one right. What it need to come is it should be x and 1 should be at the down and c2 mean y2 should be also at the bottom. Okay like y2. Like this it should be. This is chemistry. In chemistry it is correct. But in maths it's wrong. Okay, so here we have, so what we need to do, we need to write it 1 at the bottom of Mg. But it's useless, right? So 1 means if it's plainly also, it states as 1 Mg is there. If there's 1 also, it states as 1G is there. So no need to write it. It's your wish whether you need to write it or not, okay? So Cl, yes, 2 will be at the bottom. So this is magnesium chloride, okay? This is how to find it. So now pause the video, do everything and unpause it. Now I'm going to reveal the answer. So aluminium oxide. So as usual we need to write here chemistry, then valency, then aluminium oxide. Aluminium what it should be? It is Al and it is a O. So the valency of aluminium is 3 and valency of oxygen is 2. So I need to cross multiply them. So it will be equal to Al2O3. So this is aluminium oxide. Now we'll go to calcium oxide. So as usual, I'm writing, okay? Now I'm not a beginner. I'm an expert on this. Okay, so no need to write it. So what I need to do, I'll simply write the formula for this. Calcium, Ca. Oxide is nothing but oxygen. So O. So calcium's formula, I mean calcium's valency is 2 and oxygen's valency is also 2. So what I need to do, I'll cross multiply them and I'll get it as Ca2 and O2. So wait, before moving on to the next one, here there are two twos. Okay, so what I'll do is I want to make them in one. So I'm having 2x and 2y. Okay, so what I can do, I can cancel those two right in max. Same thing we can do it in chemistry also. So I will cancel them. This one and this one. So our answer will be not cancelled. Should not be there. It won't be neat you know. So we will write it as CaO is calcium oxide. If it didn't cancel it means it's also some, somewhat wrong. Okay. So some exams they won't consider it. But some teachers consider it. Okay. So, sodium nitrate. So, I want to tell you one thing, okay. Nitrate is always having the valency of 1. NO3 is for nitrate, okay. Now, nitrogen is also valency is different. So, sodium is 
Na sodium and nitrate is NO3. Okay, NO3. Okay, sodium valency is nothing but 2 and nitrate valency is nothing but 1. So I need to cross multiply them and I will get Na1. So I don't need to write and NO3. And I should put a bracket and go 2. Okay, why I am putting a bracket over here is NO3 is a substance. I mean like oxygen, NO3 is a one. Okay, so it's not a nitrogen. It's not like an oxygen. Because oxygen is means O means for nitrate it is NO3. So what we need to do, we need to put a bracket. Otherwise it will look like 32. So our equation will be wrong. So, what we need to do is, we need to put a bracket over here. Even for ammonium, NH4, and even for ammonium and all, we need to put a bracket and we need to write the 2 or 1 or 3 at the outside. Even for hydroxide, OH. Okay, so we need to, what we need to do, we need to put a bracket over here. And outside the bracket, we need to put a 2. That states that NO3. So, there are 2 nitrates. So, what are these 3 things, 2 things and all? Those are, if you see my balancing thing, then only you will understand that. You can let it pop up to your mind that these things states that how much atoms, how much oxygens are there, how much aluminium are there, how much nitrates are there. So in this case, there are two aluminiums and three oxygen. Okay, so in this case, there are one sodium and there are two nitrates. So this is what it means. We cannot simply write MgCl2, it will be, in chemical equation, it will be wrong. Because there won't be like Mg, only one atom and one atom of chlorine cannot match. So this is the chemical, how to find a chemical equation. So we have come to the end of the session. So as usual, we'll have some topic at the end. So it's an interesting topic. Let's so here we are to the end of the chapter I and mean end of the session. So this is the thing, like this is a reactivity series, okay? Reactivity series where it tells us like where we can displace an element in an equation or a, in a chemical equation, the way we will displace an element. How can we displace? Why can we displace? It tells the reason. And this just is the order of a thing. Like hydrogen is at the top means and then helium means like that. It is a reactivity series. Potassium is at the top and platinum is at the bottom. So you after learning this only you can go to the next part of my chapter. Then only you will understand it. Because my next part as I told it will be full of reactivity series. Then a precipitate. Then how to like know what type of A numbers are these etc and etc. So let's learn this reactivity series. You can either learn from the top to bottom or bottom to top. Okay. But I learned from the top to bottom. So that will be much easier for us. So I have been made a mnemonics. I search for you guys as usual. Everything whatever you learn is going to be easy right. So whatever I teach should be easy. That's my policy. That should be easy. So I found a mnemonics for this thing to learn it very quickly. Like in the snap of a fingers. Okay, so potassium, sodium, lithium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead, hydrogen, copper, silver, gold and platinum. This is not the mnemonic, what I told. The mnemonic is, please send lion, cats, monkeys and zebras into lovely hot countries signed by General Penguin. So this is the mnemonics. What is the mnemonics? Please send lion, cat, monkeys and zebras into lovely hot countries signed by general penguin so if you told repeated it or if you learned it as a sentence you learn the reactivity series from the top to bottom congratulations for that so we have come to the end of our chapter so thank you for watching my video if you have any doubt under this topic or if you want me if you want me to explain a particular topic and this session you can comment below it's free absolutely free and i'll read them as usual and my next video will be all about it thank you for watching